We've talked for years about how having a second citizenship, being a dual citizen, is on its own generally not enough to help you avoid rising taxes in your own country. You have to do something about taxes where it is that you live. You have to take action. But having a second passport can be a great insurance policy for people who are concerned about socialism, rising taxes, new types of taxes like wealth taxes and inheritance taxes coming to their country as a way to fight back and to insure against future tax risks. I'm going to give you two different perspectives to think about right now. I'm Andrew Henderson, and here at Nomad Capitalist, we help seven- and eight-figure entrepreneurs legally reduce their taxes, protect their options with second citizenship, find new markets to invest in. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. We've talked before about the concept of the tax-friendly second citizenship, but I'm going to give you two different angles today that you might want to consider. Now, a lot of people watching are from the United States, where no matter where you live, you're going to have some kind of taxation and certainly tax reporting on your worldwide income. Most countries right now don't have that. However, I do see evidence that more countries, particularly those in the West, are going to adopt some kind of system. Could be the next five years, 10 years, even 20 years. But at some point, I think you'll see more countries, kind of like what China's done for people living in Hong Kong or Colombia's done for its citizens living in Panama, come after you and say, if you're not paying taxes to us, you can't simply go and live in Monaco or Dubai or Vanuatu and avoid them. And so if you're a high net worth individual, having a second passport is a good idea. And so what we've talked about before is the idea of citizenship by investment. It's a relatively guaranteed, streamlined way where you make a donation or qualify investment into some country, generally in the Caribbean, also Malta or Cyprus or Montenegro, some country like that. And you can generally, within a matter of months, get a second citizenship. Now, particularly for some of the Caribbean options, you look at some of these countries, up to half of their revenue comes from these programs, and they do that by making not the countries, but the agents selling it, what are often misleading statements where there's no taxes in this country. Now, some of the Caribbean islands uh, are zero tax countries. They don't have taxes, such as Antigua or St. Kitts and Nevis, at least on income. Most of the countries have no taxes on things like gifts or wealth or inheritance or even capital gains in many cases. But some of the countries do actually have taxes if you decide to live there. The key is that very few people who become St. Lucian, for example, as I have, uh, choose to go and live in St. Lucia or choose to go and live in Grenada. They use the passport as a tool of convenience to enhance their travel privileges, to allow them to make investments into other parts of the world uh, for a number of different reasons. It's, a, it's an insurance plan for some people and it's an active way to be more active in the global community for others. Uh, but that's one perspective, is just go out and get a passport in St. Kitts and Nevis and figure that, hey, as long as they're in the business of accumulating tens of thousands of economic citizens, they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them and start taxing people who don't live there. Right? They're not even taxing people who do live there. That would be the first step. So that's certainly one way to go about it. And I think that for a lot of folks, uh, as we work with more and more ultra high net worth individuals, those options are interesting to them, uh, along with fast track naturalization options. It's just nice to get the passport, get it over with. However, if you're looking for something a bit more affordable, if you don't like the idea of having a passport from a Caribbean country, if you want a landed country, uh, then here's another angle. Look at countries who have a large diaspora. Uh, so, for example, uh, in my family and in our business, we've helped people get Armenian citizenships. Now, look at Armenia. Uh, Armenia has been lowering taxes. Uh, they are generally uh, with Russia, uh, more so than with the West, and Russia is not exactly a super high-tax place. They're not chasing their wealthy citizens down. Uh, around the world, or, or people aren't talking about doing it the way they are in some of the Western countries, in the European Union, for example. Um, and so a country like that, where it has a lot of people, a lot of citizens living somewhere else, that has a cultural identity in some sense of people living somewhere else, uh, that actively encourages people to come back and become Armenian citizens, even people who have never lived in Armenia, but it's in their, their blood. 
uh, a country like that to me based on its cultural identity. And we've said that since the very beginning in 2012, 2013, this is about culture. I find it a lot more likely uh, that those countries are going to continue to have tax-friendly policies for citizens than a country like France, for example, um, where you see people who want to come after the rich. And uh, you could look at another number of countries with a diaspora, uh, Ireland, for example, some of the Baltics, some of the Balkans, uh, Moldova, you know, places like that where people go and they live overseas, and that is part of the identity. Uh, I think that particularly also smaller countries with smaller populations aren't going to have the will, aren't going to have the resources, even in an era where uh, bank secrecy is dead, you have FATCA, you have CRS, where people's information is being exchanged all around the world. I just don't think you're going to have the will uh, from some of these countries, particularly those with a cultural tie. And so if you can go to one of these countries and get a citizenship, uh, one of these uh, lesser known, smaller countries, um, that people have, at least historically, even if not right now, left, to me that's an interesting potential play. And there may be in some of those countries paper residence opportunities or at least naturalization opportunities. Others may have fast-track naturalization. In the case of Ireland, certainly I've talked about how I think the European Union as a bloc will try and come together. We see criticism of various offshore uh, programs from a lot of people in the European Parliament. I think that uh, European citizens are going to have a harder time uh, in the years to come. Uh, certainly it'll be harder to leave Europe uh, without giving up more of your money in the forms of things like exit taxes. Uh, but if you look at you know, a country like Ireland, I think that they probably push back again more than a country like France, or Lithuania pushes back more than uh, a country like Spain. And so I think the, the key is if you're not going to get a, a passport in a tax-free country, people sometimes say, oh, I'm going to get a UAE passport or a Monaco passport. UAE, pretty much impossible. Monaco, rather difficult. Um, you know, the kind of countries that have very favorable tax policies are often difficult to become a citizen of. Countries in Asia as well. Some of the Central American countries perhaps are a bit more open. But you know, my point is this. If I want to preserve my ability to ensure that I have low taxes in the future, and I don't want to get hit with all kinds of new taxes, wealth, inheritance, etc. I would like to be a citizen of a country, again, if not the Caribbean, or maybe both, uh, that simply just wants to let its people leave the country and believes in that level of freedom. I think a lot of Western countries don't have a lot, have a lot of experience with that. They're used to people coming to their country and paying high taxes, which is, I think, why the United States can get away with being the only country that has a wide-ranging citizenship-based taxation plan because most Americans don't leave the country, could never imagine leaving the country. It's almost traitorous to some of them, the idea that you would simply leave the country. Forget giving up your citizenship, just living somewhere else, right? America first, that's what we're told. And so I think that's the kind of country and, and other Western countries are going to be able to more easily uh, get the political will to tax people, no matter where they live, to impose new taxes, whereas having one of these other second passports where there's just less of that identity, uh, I think is going to be one way to protect yourself. Uh, people ask me, you know, Andrew, you're a collector of citizenships, and with some constraints, I do believe in having as many options as possible. Most people don't want to have five or six or seven different citizenships, but if you picked one or two or even three, that gave you the ability to have uh, a good tr travel passport, a good place to go and live, and a good passport that was just going to leave you alone. Hopefully, all two or three of them have those options, but I think that looking at those factors is an important thing to do when you're considering which passport to get. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, Get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.